Hi everyone, happy holidays. For today's video, I'm going to talk about scheduling and the syllabus for UHG. Um, but before I get started, I just wanted to do a quick announcement. On January 8th, 2021, I'm gonna do a YouTube Live. I know that some of you are going to begin school this January, so I wanted to um, get y'all uh, your last questions. I know that I, I, I could make more videos, but realistically, if I don't, I think the, the YouTube Live will be better. Um, so join me there. It's going to be uh, January 8th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. So hope to see you all there. And as always, um, you can always email me at uegmedlife at gmail.com for any questions, or uh, you can DM me and follow me on, on Twitter at, at uag underscore med. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so for your classes, so it's a little bit different. It's not going to be like in undergrad where you choose your professor and you choose your classes. It's basically given for you. Everything is selected for you, for you. So for myself, I believe that I received a PDF form of the schedule for the entire block. So when you go to UAG, it, yes, you are um, going to go for one semester at a time. However, every semester is going to have two blocks. So for your first block, it's going to, um, you're going to um, get a, a specific schedule just for that block. And that block, you'll have all of the classes and all of the professors and all of the times already available for you. So all you have to do is download that PDF and um, that's how you'll know what classes you'll get. At the same time, you're going to receive a syllabus. Like in undergrad, um, you get a syllabus where it tells you a little bit of uh, all of the professors. So it gives you all of the emails of the professors available because you will have multiple professors per class. So for histology, you'll have a certain professor. For genetics, you'll have another, certain something like that. So here's a sample of what mine looked like. So it starts in August and your, yours will probably start in January or in August whenever you begin. And here are all the names of the professors and the classes that I, I took and the dates. And so as you notice, um, every two weeks it's, is when you will have an exam. And the exam will, have, will be everything covered within those two weeks. And then for your final exam, it's not cumulative. It's just going to be your two, um, your two weeks worth of, of classes that you had. Something that I do is I get my syllabus or, well, more importantly, the schedule of all of the classes and I go to my Outlook because you will be given an Outlook per um, when you begin, right? So as soon as you, you get your Outlook and you get your schedule, I recommend you put all of your classes. I know that it takes a while. I think it usually takes me like an hour. And the reason why is because it is... Um, all of the classes are given to you in CT time, so Central Time, Guadalajara time, basically. So if you are wherever you are, you have to convert it back into their time um, so that you're not late for class. And so it's not confusing. Um, I know that there's there's some of my classmates who don't, who, who don't do this, and I've seen them kind of like forget. And honestly, it totally makes sense because even myself, I remember I turned in an assignment late because I got confused. The professor said it was due at one, but in reality, I turned it in one my time, but it was their time. And it's just so confusing, especially if you're stressed. So I say just like um, skip all that and just put it in your calendar is what I recommend. And um, from now on, everything is going to be their time, Guadalajara time, central time. So make sure that you, you know this and follow that. Um, something that I recommend is that you also put in your in your phone, you can add in a clock. So if you add in a clock of, um, of Mexico, Guadalajara, then that way you can quickly look it up instead of having to calculate. I mean, I know that's only like two hours, it's very different or something like that, but it can get confusing. So uh, I, I also recommend you to do that. And um, my last recommendation is for the classes. So when you go to your um, syllabus, all the way at the end, you will have um, a list of all of the books that you will use for the entire block. Um, as previously mentioned, the books will be provided to you through, through their service, so you don't have to buy any books. So 
In order to know what to read per book, the name of the class indicates what you will have um, to read. So for example, or like what material is expected of you to know. So for example, if you go into intro introductory, introductory um, introduction to histology, so you know that from the title of the class, it's going to be a histology class, a histology book. So you go to your syllabus, click on the link that they provide for the histology book, and then you go to their table of contents and it, it should be specific, like the name of the class, it should be on the table of contents. So that's something that you can read. Um, yeah, so that's usually, that's usually how I recommend it. The reason why I'm hesitating <laughs> is because for histology, some professors don't just go off of one book. Um, some professors go off of multiple books and then it becomes a little confusing as to which one you should read. Just read from one. Honestly, click on the one that you like um, the most. And by that, I mean, is it easier for you to understand? That's what I usually do because at the end of the day, it's just different versions or a different way of explaining the same material. Or maybe it has like, uh, like a couple paragraphs more from the other, you know, like um, You'll get the hang of it as you go along, but that's just for histology for the other ones for like biochemistry There's just like one book um, Genetics, etc. Like it's just one um, However, I, for histology, I think um, It's going to become multiple books and then once you get into your second block it for physiology, there's multiple books and for pathology too, but don't worry about that. I'm just letting you know now to not freak out <laughs> once you get to it, you know, because it does become confusing. Um, however, some professors are, um, they do email you before the, the day before the class to tell you specifically what to read. So it depends on the professor, but if, it, if the professor does not email you, then you are um, expected just to just go to the syllabus, just go to the schedule and um, find the book yourself. Be proactive. <laughs> All right, so that's all I have for this video. I hope y'all find it useful. As always, you can uh, ask me questions in the comments below, email me or on my Twitter. I hope y'all have a safe um, uh, rest of your holidays and I'll see you then. Until the next one, bye.